Welcome to Pop and Culture Podcast, episode 80. I'm Jay. I'm Adrian, and we're back for another week of comic books, TV, music. If we get around to it, some music. We'll touch on it in three episodes. Definitely some whiskey. Absolutely. And really, we're dedicating this entire episode to Son of Zorn. Oh, God. It's... Uh... Maybe we'll talk about that after the whiskey. Okay. What are we drinking? I'm going to need a lot of this whiskey to talk about that. Uh, so we are drinking, actually, what is my favorite whiskey, uh, and that is Gentleman Jack. Yes. Uh, it is the premium smoother blend of Jack Daniels whiskey. Uh, smoother because they mellow it twice. It's double mellowed. It's quite enjoyable. Yep. Uh, I could literally sit down and drink that entire bottle in one sitting. I wouldn't be able to do anything the next day, but I would not regret a sip. Do you remember the days when you used to be able to put off, polish off this bottle and then just be fine in like three hours, four hours? Yeah. Yeah, those days are long behind me. There's, there's plenty of days where I did that and then went to work like yeah. two oh, hours yeah. later. Oh, yeah. I had two Serengeti wheats with dinner. I was like, oh, too much food and carbs. <laughs> it's just, but so in Whiskey Month, we are going with a sour mash whiskey. Yes. And this isn't necessarily the traditional sour mash whiskey. So like we said, it's mellowed twice, but it's still got the same ingredients at the beginning. So bottoms up. Bottoms up. It's delicious. Oh, so delicious that that was, uh, I did that all in one yeah. one gulp there. So good. It, it's really good. I quite enjoy it. I don't love Jack Daniel traditional. Okay. But I do quite enjoy the Gentleman Jack. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm fine with Jack Daniels. Like, if I'm going straight whiskey, that's not my, uh, my standard whiskey of choice. Sure. But uh, I'll drink it. I'll... <laughs> Sometimes when I'm broke and I'm at a convention and I want whiskey, I will even go for the cheap knockoff of Evan Williams. Yes. Which you have ridiculed for uh, oh, me before. Yes. Yeah. Although Evan Williams is starting to make a name for itself. I, well, that's because it, people are grabbing it thinking it's Jack Daniels. No, they're saying that their rye is actually supposed to be quite good. Really? That's what they say. I have not tried their rye. Like, I even read it, like, in rankings. So GQ had, like, you know... Oh, here's some great bourbons, but like here's some great rice, and they're like, you know, this bottle's two hundred dollars, but a cheaper alternative is X Y Z, and one of the honorable mentions was the Evan Williams rye. I, I, I would say we should try that for our rye week, but I don't know that I want to waste that week on that in case it's terrible, like I suspect it is. Oh, I'm good. I'm guessing it's going to be. We're actually not doing a rye week. Oh, I mean, we can, but we're doing. Bourbon. So we did scotch. This is sour mash. We're we doing do a bourbon. bourbon. We're doing Canadian, and then we're doing Japanese. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the Japanese. Yeah, all right. I, th- all right. I feel all like right. Japanese right. needs a little spotlight. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I I actually think there's enough bourbon that, or not bourbon, but whiskey that we can do two months. I mean, and then we, we could. can bring in the rye. We can bring in some of the other stuff as well. It's true. The un, the unaged whiskey, the clear. Oh, oh, I could bring in some of the uh, the copper works. Do they uh, have the clear, the unaged? I know no. what a whiskey distillery does. No, they don't have the unaged, but they do have their uh, – just just the fact that it's a barley-based whiskey That's as right. opposed to – That's mm, right. We may be doing like nine weeks of whiskey. I don't see why we wouldn't. No, I don't either. Like, it'll be our whiskey trimester instead there of our whiskey go. month. There we go. All right. Okay, let's, uh, cool. Let's get into some things. All right. What have you been watching? Um, TV wise, um, so I'm still, as I talked about last week, I'm still trying to catch up on some of the things that uh, I'd kind of left unfinished for a while. Right. And mainly, this is things that my wife and I were watching, uh, and it got put off and put off and put off. And a year later, I'm like, I'm finishing this to get it off my list. So I finished True Detective season two. I will tell you right now, the final episode of season two was maybe my favorite episode of all two seasons. Is that just because it was finally over? Or did no, they actually do a good job it? was on it? an amazing wow. episode. Okay. Uh, okay. There is a scene in the desert with Vince Vaughn. Uh, I would say he, he could have won an Emmy for that scene. Wow. Um, and obviously I've talked before about how I thought season one was better than season two overall. But I think the, the finale of season two was the best episode of that entire show. Do you think that has enough to weigh in to no. season three? Nope. Okay. I think there's a lot of people that stopped watching season two midway through and never saw that episode. Right. Uh, because 
and I was tempted to too. I mean, I was really, I was fine with the fact that I had never watched the last four episodes, other than it was still glaringly <laughs> left not, open. Yeah, uh, but I think it ended really, really well. So okay. I finished that. Uh, I'm almost done with the following season three, which was the last season of the following. Did it only go three seasons? It only went three seasons. Okay, uh, and really, it was a season too long. Um, so I get two episodes left of that and then I'll be done with that. Uh, and then I've just been watching, uh, pretty little liars. Uh, there's no episode of girl meets world this week, but the next episode is apparently Sean's wedding. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. He's marrying. So some other character I'm sure we've seen in boy meets world. No. So in, in this, you've got, uh, Riley, which is Corey and Topanga's daughter. And then, um, I'm blanking on the name of her best friend who is the Sean character of the show. Right. So Sean is marrying that girl's mom. Okay. So, I mean, it's I mean it's fine. Um, and then uh, Jess and I watched a couple episodes of America's Got Talent. We're still six episodes behind. <laughs> uh, but she uh, finishes her, ter- or her, her semester uh, tomorrow, and then I have six days before my semester starts. So we'll have like a week to just actually watch some TV. Binge watching and binge yeah. drinking. I mean, I'll be the I'll, I'll be binge drinking. She probably won't as much, but yeah. I figure you'd be handling both, and she would be productive. Sure. Yeah. We'll okay. Go they, that. Okay. Let's go cool. That. Okay. Uh, but that's all I've been watching TV wise. So actually, something you said, America's Got Talent, is reminding me of something that I've watched, which is Penn and Teller Fool Us. Okay. And I'll get into that in a, in a moment. On America's Got Talent, how many of them do you really think are talented, or is it pretty phenomenal throughout? So here's the thing. There's a lot of acts that Jess and I have watched that go through the auditions, and we're like, oh, no, that's kind of a cool act, but it's a one-off thing. Right. Uh, like a guy dancing with his dog. Cool. That's cute. You've taught the dog how to do, like, a marimba or whatever. That's it. That's all you can do with that. So, and, and then there's a ton of them that are like, I don't know why you're even putting yourself on TV. America's Got Talent shows a lot less of that than, like, American Idol did. Right. There was entire episodes of American Idol devoted oh, to yeah. the people that were terrible. Uh, so I would say it's like it's sixty forty. So in America's Got Talent, do they do they go through like a process like, oh, you won this round, we'll see you next week, or are you just like, okay, you are talented, next? No, so it's uh, it is elimination based. So after the elimin or after the original ori- initial audition episode, eighty acts go on to. Uh, the judge cut round. Okay. And then there's four episodes of that where it's each episode's 20 people cut down to seven. So you go from 80 to 28. So you may see the dancing dog three, four times. Right. Got it. Uh, okay. In this case, we saw it twice in the same time. It was just... Got cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Penn and Teller Fool Us. Uh, someone else had mentioned this to me. And I like, I like magic. Okay. Like, everyone likes magic to some degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people like a quick car trick, and that's good enough. Some people like the hour-and-a-half stage shows. Right. I'm good with the 20-minute long episodes and be done with it. Okay. So Penn and Teller Fool Us, essentially, is Penn and Teller sitting on on uh, the stage, and the magician comes and does one of their best acts. Okay. And they see if they can fool Penn and Teller and how it was done. Sure. So I watched the first episode of season three. I didn't realize it had been going on for so long. Okay. Uh, the host is Alice Hannigan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of kind of cool. Uh, the first guy, they fooled them. The other three, they knew exactly how it was done. But they don't tell you how it was done. They do like magician speak. Okay. So the thing would be over and they're like, okay, so we noticed you did a... a you made a deal with the devil to really get this thing done, didn't you? And he's like, uh, yeah. He goes, so you did the, an initial deal with the devil, and it, it kind of became a blind man hang a little bit later. So like, okay. they're using these phrases where you're like, I have no idea what you're sure. saying. Sure, yeah, yeah. But at the end, Alice then asks guys, well, are you convinced? They're like, yeah, they obviously, they got it. I didn't fool them. Okay. The problem I actually have with this show is I like that it's like a couple of magicians, like, here's my top thing. What I don't like is that since they only have this one shot, they are all completely way too over the top. Okay. Not the illusion itself. I was going to call it a trick, but apparently that's insulting. Not the illusion itself, but the actual magicians. Like, they're just trying too hard to be somebody yeah. on that yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. 
And then Penn, obviously not tell it. Which one talks? Penn talks. Penn's that's what I, that's what I yeah. thought. So Penn is kind of a dick when he oh, talks sure. to him and stuff. And I'm just like, all right, well, you're, you're on my nerves. So remember, I don't know. We talked about the Adam Kroll show on air. I think we did. Back. We, we may have made okay. reference to it a couple of times. Because Jay and I used to listen to it. Every morning. Actually, one of, the, one of the first times that we hung out was talking about the Adam Carolla show when we were down in Portland going to get that camera. Right. Yeah. And it was a great show. It, it has since gone quite downhill. Mm-hmm. But it was a great show. But Penn was on it a lot. Yeah. And he was always kind of an asshole. Like, it wasn't necessarily just like he thought he was right. It was he thought he was gonna was right and he was gonna berate you until you agreed with him. Yeah. Not till you were dismissive until you agreed with him. And he kind of brings that a little bit on the stage. Okay. To where I was like, okay, you did it with the first magician. It was kind of funny, but you keep doing it. You keep doing it. Uh, one, one episode of this is enough for me. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm not going back to Penn and Teller fool us. Um. All right. Fair enough. And actually, it was, it's funny because on, on America's Got Talent, some of my favorite acts are the magicians. Yeah. Because some are really good. I'm like, I, I have no clue how you did that, but that's amazing. So in one of them, this magician gives Allison Hannigan a book. Okay. It was uh, Sherlock, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And he's like, I can tell you every word, every line, every paragraph, everything in that entire book. And she's like, uh, okay. So he's like, no, seriously. Like, let's go back to back. So they go back to back. And he's like page 167 and she opens it and then she can't see because they're back to back he pulls out a copy of the book and he looks at 167 oh jeez! and he's like well it's got three paragraphs and it's got this and that and this goes on for a little while and she's like what is what like i can feel you moving are you doing something he's like no not at all and then it was all over and everyone was like i wasn't really that magical right and then pen's like it's not a magic trick you just read the book and then he shows his copy of the book it's 100 percent blank oh okay that's an interesting and you're twist. like okay and then ben's like well then then you just have a book memorized he goes no it's not memorized wait, wait what do you mean it's not memorized because i do not have that book memorized he goes so now you're like wait a minute if this guy's telling the truth and they you can so he's now asking him questions like almost in a native dialect that nobody understands but okay. them. And then Penn's like, I-, I have no idea. Like if it wasn't blah, 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 and you don't do a blah, blah, blah. Like if you don't do the magic goat and you don't do this sure. and that. Yeah, and it's yeah. not memorization. You showed us your book is blank and I checked. You don't have another one on you. I have no idea how you do this. And I'm like, okay, well, that's that's pretty cool then. Yeah. I mean, if he's stumping the guy, that's that's the point. Right. But he was kind of an ass about it. Well, Sure. And it's not even that he was asked, but I'm like, oh, that's a really cool trick. I would have had a lot more fun with that if once the trick was over, you just got off stage and somebody else came on. I didn't right. need the in-between pen and yeah. color part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it okay. is what it is. Uh, anything else you've been watching? Uh, just catching up on the rest of the stuff. Master Sh- Chef Masters, Jane the Virgin. Okay. Um, as I touched on this a couple weeks ago at now, and I'm going to bring it up again kind of briefly wrestling okay wwe wrestling sure sure so there was always been raw yeah raw has been their flagship three hours long monday night live thank god hulu has an hour and a half abridged version where they just cut out all like little things oh okay like the c and d stories sure or things like that so the manageable hour and a half yeah and then there was always thursday night smackdown which was previously recorded but it was kind of just a carryover from Raw. So you only needed to watch Raw. Okay. And, that, and you were done. Yeah. Well, they announced that now SmackDown is going to be live Tuesday nights. Right. So it's two hours live on Tuesday nights. And it's a different, there's there's separate rosters for yeah, each. So, so they, it's not they, crossover They have at all. split the roster. Yeah. And it has actually made it more entertaining. Okay. What I found, though, is you only need to watch the brand that you like. Sure. And then you can just ignore the other brand. Okay. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird. The reason I'm bringing it up is I did not realize the writing credits that wrestling has. Like, did you know that Freddie Prince Jr. wrote 
wrestling for like five years. What? Puff Daddy produces all their music in the video games. Like what? all this crazy shit I'm finding out. And I'm like, I was not aware of this. No, no, like neither was I. So they had Puff Daddy on this latest uh, Raw. And I'm like, all right, well, why is Puff Daddy? And then they go on to explain that he's produced the past couple songs and he actually produced everything in the new video game and this and that. And I'm all like, and then I read about Freddie Prince Jr. He just recently, uh, like I think a year ago, left, stopped writing. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I mean, I, I knew he wasn't in movies, but I didn't know that's what he was doing with his time. Well, I mean, he's getting paid clearly bank. Yeah. Because he still, he writes a lot of movies that we've seen nowadays. Oh, really? He is, he's well known for being a, uh, a script touch-up artist in okay. the industry. Okay, okay. And he's still got sick producer money. Yeah. So, like, he, he's doing fine, let alone his wife pulling in money as well. Right. But I was just surprised that now seeing that they separated it, that the writers are saying that it's easier for them because now they're, instead of they just writing. They have to focus on the one show. Right. Yeah. They, not even just the one show, but select characters to develop. Okay. Yeah. It's become much more entertaining. Yeah. So it has, uh, it has stepped up. Like, the script writing has improved. Yes, it's it's scripted. Oh, it's absolutely scripted. I mean, literally scripted. When they talk to each other, those are all scripts. Yep. What I didn't realize, though, is they only have like 20 minutes to memorize those scripts and stuff. Okay. So like, I'm like, oh, that's real impressive then. So, I mean, most of it's probably, and I, I have no factual information to, to say this, but most of it's probably they give it a read over. They get kind of their touch points and, and probably ad lib a little bit to try to just hit those main points. Some do. Some do the ad libbing. Some are perbatim. Really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be rough. I, I think it would be too, right? Yeah. But it works. And they also found out that they have control over their characters. Right. So, like, I did not know that. I thought WWE was just like, hey, your character is you're going to be the demon Kane. That's it. That's your okay. character. No, they actually can be like, no, I'm actually going to do this type of character. I'm going to yeah. do this. So, they, WWE is actually a production the production but you are actually in control of your character it's how they have when i know there was as to what they can and can't do i know there was the big deal um oh jesus probably early 2000s there was uh the, the kind of like group what do they call themselves the cabal or whatever there's like four or five people that were kind of coming up with most of the storylines sure uh it was like triple h and and sean michaels and a couple of these other guys um and there was this big deal because it was somebody's final match and they were supposed to be against like Triple H or something like that. And at the end of the match, like all the people like they came all together for a hug. And yeah. say goodbye. Yeah. So and it was because all of them for like 10 years had been pretty much sure. running the company, the direction of the company and cu coming up with these storylines. Uh, so that was a big thing. So there, it was all collaborative. Yeah. So, so there is an overall like script writing. But like that'd be like me saying, okay, I, I'm now a professional wrestler. I want WWE goes. We love. We've seen your your physical ability. It's great. We've seen your mic work. We like the character you developed in this other company. Mm -hmm. Do you want to bring that character over? Or do you want to make a new character? Right. Well, okay. So it's your job to make a character the fans are gonna like that yep. they can then promote, and you work with that character. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I remember watching a couple documentaries about uh, the people going through the development camps. Right. And how when you get to the development camp, you have to establish your character. And not only are you going through the training on how to take the hits and, and uh, you know, do all your footwork in the, the, the ring, but they're actually – you're going through acting class and stuff yep. like that. Uh, and you're actually developing your character all through that before you ever get your major contract. So that's one of the other things that they said is that their acting coaches, uh, they won't disclose who, but it is like a, not Academy Award winning, but well-known celebrities in the industry oh, are their acting coaches and stuff. Yeah, but they didn't disclose who. So it's just in interesting to know all that, like, behind the scenes. Yeah. Kind of so. Carl Weathers. Right? He, he can act about things and stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah. he's. So moving Anyways. on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Movies. You watch any movies? I watched one movie. What'd you watch? This, this is a throwback. I watched Gattaca. Wow. So. As in, you and, not you and McGregor, uh. 
Jude Law. Jude Law and Ethan, uh, Hawk Ethan Hawke. And Uma Thurman. Yeah. Okay. So Good movie. I listened to a podcast with Ethan Hawke a couple weeks ago. He was on Nerdist. And that's when I watched Predestination. Okay. In that same podcast, he was talking about uh, Gattaca, which I had never seen. I was aware that the movie existed. I had no clue what it was. Okay. So I watched, uh, I added Predestination and Gattaca to my Netflix queue at the same time. And I just now got around to getting Gattaca. Uh, really interesting movie. Uh, I don't know how much it holds up because it was 96, 97, somewhere in there. No, it's been 10 years since that movie came out. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's been almost 20 years since that movie came out because it's 2016. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. Holy yeah. shit. Holy. I'm pretty sure it was like 97. All right. Well, tell the folks what Gattic is about. Uh, so society has gotten to the point where it can, uh, and it's funny because we're pretty much at this point. Oh yeah. Now, oh yeah. Genetically engineer children. So you can say, I want, or well, really you don't even have a choice. The, is, the government says, we're going to develop your your kid to have all these specific skills. Um, because and this is what society needs. Our right. society needs this. Yeah. And and from birth, they can take a blood sample of your child and determine when it's going to die, how it's going to die, what it's going to do in its life, what type of jobs and careers it's it's most apt to, to perform well in, and that sort of thing. So there's this kid who actually uh, was born naturally without genetic engineering. Uh and he, as a, as a small child, gets interested in space travel. Um, and there's this whole subplot where his older brother or his younger brother was genetically engineered. And there's they've always been kind of fighting each other and, and trying to figure out who's best. And he ends up leaving his home as a young child. Uh, and then there's this plot where he decides to pay this guy a lot of money to give him an identity of somebody who was genetically engineered and who is predestined to be... Uh, an astronaut, but who was actually a really good athlete and got injured in a car crash. Right. So now he takes over this person's identity and there's this whole thing where there's like urine samples and, and blood samples and all this. So he could pass all these security checks. Uh, and it's just kind of the story of how he gets to that point and the consequences of what may or may not be happening. Uh, if he gets found out, uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of talented Mr. Ripley. Okay. In the sense that it's somebody taking on somebody else's identity to have a more privileged life. But in that, he was not aware that he was doing it, I thought. No, he, he willingly did it. He willingly killed the guy and, and took over his life. But what I meant was that in Gattaca, Jude Law knew oh. he was doing oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. Ripley, no, no, no. Right. There's, um, and both have Jude Law in it. That was my connection. I'm like, they both just happen to have Jude Law. And I want to say Talent Mr. Ripley was like 98 or 99, so right oh, around the same time. Matt Damon, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, really interesting movie. Definitely an interesting uh, concept. Uh, I I recommend it. It's a good watch. It's I think it was like an hour and a half, so it went by pretty quick. Sure. So, uh, what about you? Oh, I watched another movie, but I want to see what else you watched first. So, I have watched one movie and i heard one interesting movie thing this morning okay so what movie did you watch i watched victor frankenstein okay let's let's talk about that what did you think about that movie this is um daniel radcliffe this is harry potter professor x yeah yes yeah, yeah. uh professor x plays uh victor von frankenstein and then harry potter plays igor right where so it's all told from Eeyore's perspective. Okay. And it all starts with him being in the circus and then him being a brilliant physician, Eeyore. Okay. okay. But since he's a hunchback, nobody takes him seriously and he gets pushed around at the circus and they're performing one night and the girl he has a crush on falls. She's a trapeze artist. Sure. Falls, broken collarbone, but it's blocking her lungs. She one of the flying Graysons? It's too soon, man. I know. <laughs> okay, I know it's been like thirty years. It's still too soon. Okay. There actually, it's been more than thirty. Years. Oh god, it's I, been, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking since Nightwing, but yeah. Yeah. So he he runs down to help save her. Uh, the Doctor Frankenstein shows up to save her because he was in the audience. And Igor's like, "Well, if you do this," and the doctor's like, "Oh my god, yes, you can. You're you're a genius." But oh, move her arm this way because of this bone. Like they're talking about like. Her way it broke, if they just okay. knocked it back into place without moving her lung back, it'd actually puncture her lung. Okay. So they do that, and they save her life. And then Frankenstein breaks him out of the circus later on. 
and then immediately puts this huge needle in his back. He's not a hunchback, apparently. Apparently, he's had a, a cyst in there for 18 years. So he drains it, and suddenly he can he puts a brace on him. He can walk upright. Okay, of course. He yeah. becomes handsome because he cuts his hair, and oh, now geez. Igor is just Harry Potter with Prince Valiant's haircut. Okay. Uh, then Igor decides that Frankenstein... So essentially, Igor is doing the hard work of like making this lung come back to life, and Frankenstein's the one putting them into the monsters and creating them and whatnot. Okay, it, it was very meh. Like, I mean, as I'm watching, I'm like, how did you get Professor X and Harry Potter in this shit? Right. Like, how much money did you throw at them? Because it was not good. Like when it was over, like it, there were some redeeming scenes to it. Okay. The final scene, the way the Frankenstein monster looked, was pretty good. It's equivalent entertainment level as Sisters. Like, right. yeah, like it was done. I was like, all right. I almost wanted to delete it just so I don't have that hard drive space back. No, you totally should. Right? Yeah, because that's what, like four and a half gigs? No, no, my movies are because they're I'm doing. Um, it's just four eighty p. So oh. I'm at like one, oh, so one it's point. D- oh, right. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a DVD, so it's like D- not DVD even a gig. Yeah, so, okay. you know, whatever. When I lose space on the hard drive, then maybe. Well, you looks... just need to go buy the new... Uh... The new Seagate? Was it Seagate? Yes. The, the... I was going to send you the link. The new, like, 60 terabyte solid state hard drive? I think, it, I think it's 100. Regardless, like that. it's a yeah. mate. It's for business purposes only. Though. Right, it's yeah. It's, it's, only, it's only for business. But I didn't realize... I, I read the price on the – who else has the, the big – the 10 or the, the – Western Digital. Is it Western Digital? Mm. It's $10,000 for mm. the solid-state drive. How much do you think this one's going to be, solid-state that many Oh, I'm terabytes. sure they're clearing 100000 Yeah, no thank yeah. you. But I have a 10-terabyte spinning disk I got at Costco for like 60 There you go. Um, really fast on the movie news I heard because it just – this is so petty, but it makes me so happy. Okay. Ghostbusters. Oh, I saw this. $70 million below budget right now. Oh. They are at a loss. Oh, I'm so happy about that. And in the same like same page article, they have greenlit Ocean's 8, the female reboot of Ocean's 11. And so, and I've heard, obviously, Sandra, I think it's Sandra Bullock it is, is the, Sandy the main B. star. Sandy B, yeah. But now they're talking about Rihanna's going to be in it, too. There was, like, a couple names that are thrown around today for other cast members, because there's eight of eight them. them. So. Yeah. And what was the other movie you watched? Well, so there was, another, uh, there was a movie that came out this weekend that you said you were going to go watch in the theater. Did you get... I have not had a chance to go to the theater. Did I, you... I did go see it. And? Um... Not nearly as bad as everybody's making out to be, especially not the critic scores. Well, there was there was definitely parts of it I could have done without, but I think overall it was it was good. There's huge discrepancies between the critics and, and the, the reviewers. Actual, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, there was uh, there's entire characters I could have done without. Sure, uh, El Diablo, namely. Uh, well, don't they kill him off? No, he makes it through. Do, no, it's he? it's a. Uh, uh, Slipknot. I know Slipknot, Slipknot dies. Slipknot gets killed off. El Diablo makes it all the way through. And I'm like, I could have done with you dying before Slipknot. Okay. Because uh, he's just this mopey Mexican guy that ha- like he refuses to use his powers. And he uses his powers. And everyone's like, impressed. I'm like, he fucking just lit up a floor of a building. That's it. I don't, I don't Stereotypical, care. lazy, motionless Mexican. Yeah. Um, the, the, the villains I could have done without. So it's Enchantress. Uh, which, demon brother, right? Which they never name in the movie, but somebody wrote an article about who they thought it was supposed to be comic wise. But so it's it's Cara Delevingne. I don't know. How to sure, say she's 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 actually a model. She was also in Paper Towns. Uh, she's in this, and it's she's whatever. But then when they they put her in her like full enchantress form, they CGI her tits too. <laughs> To make them like three sizes bigger, I'm like, why? Like, I realize that the enchantress in the comics is busty because she's, she's a gifted. female in a comic, she's and that's gifted. just. But I'm like, just, I mean, put her in a little push-up, whatever. But I don't, I don't need her to go from B's to like double D's. 
in obvious CGI. Right. Where there's there's shots where it's center of the frame. And I'm like, I don't... <laughs> uh, but no, other than that, I thought it was pretty good. Um, so I went with Jessica. We, we went and saw it uh, Saturday afternoon. Okay. Uh, we went to the 3.30 show on Saturday, so it was packed. We were in the front part of the theater, Ugh. which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Uh, but we it was like no buffer zone between us and people right. on either side, which is annoying. We were going to get tickets to the 4 o'clock show, so we show up at like 3.10, and I, I asked for tickets for the 4 o'clock show, and like, okay, so that's uh, – it's it's in 3D, and I'm like, nope, never mind. Because I've probably talked about this sometime before. On this, I'm pretty much blind out of one eye, so 3D, I can't see 3D. Right. So I'm not going to pay extra – and I have glasses. I'm not going to pay extra – to take my glass off, put 3D glasses on to see a picture in 2D. Right. When I can pay four dollars less per ticket and see it. Nope. Understand. Normal. Totally understand. Um. So that was my main gripe with it is that it was a full theater, and there's a couple characters I could do without. But other than that, I thought it was really good. Uh, you got scenes with Ben Affleck, Batman in there. Right. Um. And there's a mid credit scene with Ben Affleck, which is interesting. Um. So definitely stay for that. There's. I don't think there's anything at the. Does he play end. Bruce Wayne or is he Ben Affleck? So there's scenes in the movie where he's Batman, and there's a mid credit scene where he's Bruce Wayne okay. talking to Amanda Waller. Right. And you there's some some things you see in the the movie too where you see a tie be- between Wayne Industries and some of the other stuff that's happening with Suicide Squad. Okay. So that's kind of rolled in there. Um, but I I thought it was a pretty good movie. Better or worse than BVS? I would say about equal. Okay. So I I've talked about my problems with BVS where. Sure. Uh, I'm not even gonna get back into that. But, so, but I, I would say it's about equal. I don't think one's better than the other, and I don't think either of them are as bad as people make out of them. The, the problem with that, to me though, is that still stems. That means DC's still losing the movie war. If it's on par with BVS, they're still losing the movie war in my True. mind. I, I would still say that Marvel's movies are better. Uh, there's been a lot of talk online about after BVS came out, there was a lot of reshoots for Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of scenes where you can see some of those edits that happen, things that were reshoots, things that got cut totally that don't make sense to me. So apparently there's a lot – that's a lot of people's complaint is that the editing was horrible. It was pieced together kind of illogically. Some things just didn't make sense. Yeah. But then a lot of the scenes were just cut out completely. Like a lot of the Joker scenes were cut out. A lot of the stuff we yeah. saw in the commercials of them at the bar and everything so, else. So, yeah, there's – I think somebody – I read that there's 12 minutes of Joker in the whole movie. Or or maybe it was 10 or something like that. There is now a lawsuit. Somebody's filing a lawsuit of they against are. Warner Brothers Studios for misrepresentation of Joker in this movie in that they were led to believe that he was going to be a main character. That's not a viable lawsuit whatsoever. No. And that's why people are stupid. Look at let's look at obviously this is not gonna be the same thing. Jersey Girl with Kevin Smith. Uh-huh. Kevin Smith's movie's Jersey Girl. When it first came out, it said starring Ben Affleck, uh, Liv Tyler, and Jennifer Lopez. Okay. Jennifer Lopez died in the opening scene of that movie, never seen again. But she was in it. She was in it, and she at that time she was a huge celebrity. Yeah. So you can't really be like, oh, there wasn't enough Joker. I'm suing you. Right. Like, for what? Did you ask for – here's the thing. There's not enough Joker. I'm suing you. Did you ask for a refund? Because what – Right. What if Suing you, sat you for through what? The, if you sat through the entire movie and went home and bitched about it, but you still only paid for that ticket, fuck you. Well, that's, Start with getting your 850 back. And that's it, right? That's the end of the lawsuit. What damages are you going to – I come from the legal background. What damages are you going right. to provide? Did, Loss this, of time? Okay, what is your hourly wage breakdown? Let's say you win this lawsuit. You get the eight seventy five for your ticket. You had two hours of time to be generous. Let's say you even make $100,000 a year. You're going to break it down. All things said and done, you're going to give maybe $100 for this lawsuit. Right. Yeah. Filing a lawsuit costs $250, so you get reimbursed for that as well. You won't get reimbursed for your attorney's fees. Nope. So you're looking because it's not – enough to actually file in grand journey so you don't have an attorney you're looking at a reimbursement of 350 dollars and your time go fuck yourself it's like the uh the whole lawsuit about the, the subway sandwiches being like eight inches or eight and a half inches and people suing for like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever it was and like no fucking give me your receipts proving how many of those sandwiches you bought right i will reimburse you one twelfth of your purchase price for every time for the one twelfth of the sandwich right. that was missing no fuck them all 
Anyways, all right. Uh, and then, no, good movie. Go see it. Um, Jared Leto is is Joker. I think he did really good with the Joker they developed. I just don't know that I like the Joker that they developed. I have no problem with his performance, just what they came up with for him to perform. So this is funny you say that. This reminds me of an argument I was hearing today at the comic store. Someone was saying that Cesar Romero is still the best Joker. Oh, that is my favorite. I And that's not saying Jack Nicholson didn't do a great job. That's not saying that Heath Ledger didn't do a great job. That's not saying that Mark Hamill isn't a great animated Joker. Sure. But I fucking love Cesar Romero. Right? Like, there's something about that Joker that just sits right with everyone. Yeah. And it may be because he pioneered it. It may be the way he laughed. It may. I think it's just because of his mustache. The way that they put the white makeup yeah, over the he mustache. He used to shave his mustache. Yeah, well, whatever. That dude was a symbol. Yeah. So. All right. Speaking of comic book movies, do you want to talk about some comic books? Let's do it. You All got right. a little bit of bigger stack over than I do. What I do you do? Got? All right. So, starting off with DC, we have All Star Batman number one. Batman Detective Comics 938, which I find interesting because the first issue, and I don't know if I brought this up, didn't say Batman Detective Comics. It just said Detective Comics. Yeah. Yeah. They added that come the second one, Rebirth. Deathstroke Rebirth, Earth 2 Society 15, The Flash number four, How Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps number two, Red Hood and the Outlaws number one, Superman Action Comics 961, New Super hyphen Man 2. Superwoman number one. Image we got Birthright number 18 and Black Monday Murders number one. It's the new Hickman book. Damn it. Now I'm going to have to buy that. That is all I know about this book. Oh, it's called Black Monday Murders and it's by Jonathan Hickman. I'll pick up the first issue. So I've had tons of problems with Hickman's like Marvel work. But I love his independent stuff. Anything he's done for Image or anything like that has been amazing. Nightly News was great. Red Master of Mars was great. East of West. Oh, I forgot about that. That one. uh... It started good. Yeah. Started good. Sure. Um, but no, I, I've I've really enjoyed his work. So you've got a and I have in front of me the del- traits, the deluxe edition. the deluxe edition volume one of Fatal. Uh, we mentioned Brew Baker and uh, Sean Phillips. We last talked about time. that last week, yeah. So I kind of wanted to touch on Fatal this time. Okay. Uh, so I picked up um, five books this week. Okay. Uh, I got All Star Batman one. I got Detective. 938, I got Hal and the Green Lantern Corps 2, I got Flash 4, and I got uh, All-Star X-Men 12. I forgot to write it down. All-Star X-Men? Or All-New X-Men, all sorry. Uh, All-New X-Men 12. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking All-Star Batman. And sure. No, I, I, yeah. I followed the dots on that sure. one. Yeah. Um, and I only read one of those. The only the only one I got through was All-Star Batman. And okay. only because I, I was such a fan of uh, Scott, Snyder. Scott Snyder's sure. New 52 Batman. I wanted to see how he's going to do on this new one. And... I start off really pissed off at this book. Okay. Because they did this stere- sto- storytelling trope that I hate, where they start off on a scene, and you see like three or four panels of it, and then 12 hours earlier. Sure. And then you see a couple panels of that, two days before that, nope. two weeks before that. And that shit drives me crazy. Because I'm like, just tell, okay, I get that you're trying to drop me in the middle of action to build suspense and then trying to fill me in, but I hate it. So the first like four or five pages of the book, I'm like, I this is driving me crazy. If this is what this is gonna be, uh, this is a one and out for me. But as he started telling more and more of the story, it started making sense because that's the part I hated. Is it wasn't making sense at first. Once I started realizing what's happening, I'm like, okay, I'm more and more okay sure. with this. Um, so you picked it up. You haven't read it yet, though. I haven't read it yet. So it's a Batman and Two Face story. Right. So it's uh, it's about how Batman is now dealing with Two Face because Two Face is becoming this very big power broker in Gotham, in the underground. He's starting to get all this information on people, uh, and he's still got this this dual personality where one of them is the very much Two Face villain, but then there's still a little remnants of Harvey Dent. Okay. So Harvey Dent asks him to take asks Batman to take him to this certain place. So you're dropped in the middle of people trying to find Batman and and two face in this little diner in the middle of nowhere. And you don't understand quite what's happening, but as they keep going back in time and back in time and back in time, you start realizing why people are searching for them. And it ends up being really good. Okay. I'm glad I read it all the way through. Cause if I'd given up after page five, I would have missed what's actually set up to be a really good story. So there are times where that storytelling model works really well. There are other times where you feel like the writer did it because they thought they were being clever. Right. Cause their story is just weak. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that that, 
handoff. Yeah, so I'm actually now I'm I'm very much looking forward to issue two of this. Where at first I was like, oh cool, I didn't not, that's one less book I have to write. But. Right. Um. So the reason I want to talk about Fatal is we talked about uh, Killer Be Killed number one last mm-hmm. week and mm-hmm. how their first issues are a little weak. I read the first issue of Fatal and it I could not get behind it really. Okay. It just wasn't for me. I read it as an image first. So it was only a dollar. Sure. And a buddy's like, you got to read Fatal. Like, what is, like, you like noir stuff, read Fatal. And I know you're not huge into it. So I tried to read the first trade, and I got halfway through it, so about three issues into it, and I'm like, I just, I I can't. And like we said last week, usually it's first issues, very slow setup, but, like, I got three issues in, and I'm like, I'm just not into this. And I actually closed it and put it back. Okay. Uh, So this deluxe edition has the first two trades in it. Okay. I've only read the first trade. Okay. And it is fantastic. Okay. I quite enjoyed it, but a very slow, slow start. But the payoff on the last the last part, like the epilogue, I couldn't remember that word for the save of my life. The epilogue of book one, you're just like, Oh well yeah, no, now I'm now I'm fucking in. Like yeah. what's next? Right. Which is how they are, they have always been. So yeah. I kinda wanted to look through it. So you're right. Number one of this, this guy meets this girl at a funeral who knows his grandfather. But it's not really his grandfather. It's the guy who kind of helped raise him because his dad's in the crazy house. And some weird cult stuff happens, and that's it. And yeah. You finish it, you're like, oh. Oh, okay, thanks. I'm, I'm done here. And then you That read was about it, my it, feeling, yeah. But then you read it in its entirety, you're like, Oh no, no, I'm not. I'm not even close to done here. Okay. Right now. So what you're saying is I should go back and give it another shot. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But really, it's because we talked about you know killer be killed. So this was fresh in my mind because I literally just read this recently. I'm all like, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm okay. gonna bring it. And I'm gonna talk about it. So cool. There's two of these deluxe or four trades. And that was the all of it for the book, right? Yep. That's it. Yeah. That is it. So. It's same for fade out. Four trades or two deluxes. Yep, yep. So read it. That is it for me this week. That's all I got. Take care. See you next time.